I'm Nancy Ison. Welcome to Barnes Takeout. I'm the Gunn Family Chief Curator and Happy New Year. Uh, it's uh, if this is the start of your new year, January 1st, everything is uh, off to a, <laughs> a fresh start. Um, I'd like to share with you today a picture that I think is wonderfully uplifting. Uh, in many places, it's a cold time of year. And this is a wonderful Mediterranean landscape that was made by Amadeo Modigliani, the Italian artist, in 1919. Uh, in the south of France, and perhaps this is the year where we get to travel again, who knows. <laughs> now we're in room 19 of the Barnes Foundation, so that's one of the rooms upstairs, and we're looking to the right hand side of the doorway that you see sort of just off centre in the room, um, and I'm just going to focus in so you can see exactly where I mean. Here we are, it's a wonderful little scene, just nestled in between a Soutine and a Matisse, and as you can see, has this really wonderful warm palette to it. So let's look at the work more closely. Now, you might be surprised if you've come across any of Modigliani's works to know that this is one of the pieces by him. He only made four landscapes in his career, so we feel very fortunate at the Barnes Foundation that we have one. And it shows cypresses and houses in Cannes. So even the title there lets us know that we're in the south of France. Now, ordinarily, Modigliani lived and worked in Paris. Uh, like so many young artists, he was attracted to the city. He had left his native Italy to make a life in Paris. And there he had become part of a thriving artistic community. But during the First World War, life became quite tough for artists. Modigliani had health issues and he couldn't enlist. Uh, so he carried on working as, a, as an artist while other young men went to the front. However, he still managed to have a reasonably good existence in Paris in the First World War. Uh, he had his first solo exhibition during that time, but he had health troubles, as I mentioned, and those were not improving during this period. Um, what's more, in the last months of the First World War, Paris uh, was bombed. Uh, German bombing began on the outskirts of the city in the, uh, the early part of 1918. And so there was a, a quite understandably great fear for people's well-being. On top of all of this, Modigliani had a drink problem uh, that was getting quite out of control. And so his dealer, his art dealer, Leopold Zabrowski, persuaded him along with a doctor that it would be the best thing for his health and his safety indeed to go to the south of France. And in order to persuade him to do this, he encouraged Modigliani to travel with a friend of his, the painter Soutine, uh, and also with his girlfriend, Jeanne Boutin. Uh, Jeanne uh, took her mother <laughs> um, for the sake of propriety. Um, you know, it was not really the dumb thing for a young woman to go off traveling with her boyfriend in the early 20th century. Uh, but Jeanne at this time was already expecting Modigliani's child. So um, <laughs> propriety is one thing, but perhaps they were a little late to that. <laughs> um, nonetheless, uh, despite all the trepidation, Modigliani set off for the south of France um, in, uh, in the spring of 1918 and seemingly settled there quite nicely. Um, you know, at first he writes back to his dealer and I've got a little citation from a letter. All these changes, changes of circumstance and change of season make for me, make me fear a change of rhythm and atmosphere. So we get a sense that he was worried about this um, and yet quite quickly he finds a new community in the south of France and starts to experiment. Um, now, what can we say about this landscape? If we look at the way it's painted, you can see that really it's quite thin. And this is something that's quite distinctive of Modigliani. You see little bits of unpainted ground just around the outlines of the, of the object. So here we have the, there's a little sort of white halo around the tree. You can see on the top of the roof that he has seemingly uh, sketched in those little architectural details in blue paint and then filled them quite hastily. Uh, and again, in the, the colours of the wall, we see those little specks of white. I 
quite like to this way that the look you see that blue outlining again on the barks of the trees there. Now Modigliani and Soutine lived separately from most of the the people that they traveled with. Um, you know Jeanne Boutin and her mother lived in a guest house, Zabrowski and his partner lived in a guest house and also um, they traveled with a a Japanese painter, Fujita, and his wife, um, they, they may have traveled together, in fact, or, or they may have just met up when they got to Nice. Uh, but Soutine and Modigliani stayed in a farmhouse, and some of the landscapes actually show that. Um, so this really is, is typical of the kind of rustic buildings that you see in the works that Modigliani makes uh, of yeah, these landscapes. And interestingly, he decides not to use a landscape format. Instead, this landscape is vertical. Now, we know that Modigliani used vertical canvases to paint portraits, that, that seems more logical, but my colleague Simonetta Frequelli, uh, who's an art historian and, and works a lot on Modigliani, has suggested that maybe he, he created this high format um, to give the sense of hills. The, the landscape in the south of France is, is very rocky, um, you know, has lots of, of changes in altitude, and most of the views, in fact, all the views that Modigliani paints are from Utdikan, so um, looking down the hillside. This is much more um, immediate than some of them. Uh, a lot of the landscapes that he makes give you more of a sense of, of the surrounding area, whereas here the focus is very much on the buildings. And what are the coloration? And again, just focusing on this lovely rich yellow um, you can just sort of sense the warmth in this palette. I love the way that um, you get this sort of golden highlight over the white ground. It's almost dazzling in its brightness. And then just these little flecks of orange as if to describe fruit on trees, all very hastily done. Now, the South of France for many artists of Modigliani's generation was synonymous with Cézanne. Cézanne had passed in Aix-en-Provence in 1906, but his memory was still very strong. And I think that this was an opportunity for Modigliani to experiment with those kind of colors and to reconnect with the idea of being a Mediterranean painter. He had Italian heritage, the south of France, uh, I think in, in that way seemed quite a, an obvious location for him to be in. And he actually stayed until May 1919 in the south of France. So this canvas is dated 1919. And we know that it's likely from that moment because in a letter that was probably made at the beginning of that year, Modigliani tells his art dealer, Leopold Zabrowski, that he's making these pictures. Um, you know, he, he says that the first one might be a bit childish, but, but generally speaking, they're, they're all right here, you know, to paraphrase. <laughs> what I would say is that the exercise was quite short lived. Although Modigliani stayed and worked in the south of France, he didn't make many landscapes, just those four. And when he returns to Paris, uh, the, really the exercise is over. But it's wonderful, I think, to have this little glimpse of an artist working in sunny climes. And, and really, I think, you know, on a, on a cold day, it might get us all thinking about where we might head to next. Well, thanks very much for listening and see you soon on Barnes Takeout. Bye bye. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.